When we hear the government wants to raise taxes because there's a budget deficit or it has to finance some project, we often ask why don't they just print more money? The government needs to finance a lot of things, the military, police, government officials, education, health, social security and a lot more. Since these budgets cannot be compromised, the government has to spend more than it earns. The term budget deficit refers to the difference between what the government earns and what it actually spends. The government only earns so much every year from taxes and most of the time, it is not enough. So they actually have to print more money to survive every year. The government can finance its budget through different means. First of all is taxing. Taxing is very familiar to us through income tax, corporate tax, value-added tax that we pay. It is what the government asks from its people in return of the institution. However, like what I said earlier, most of the time the tax that the government earns from its people is not enough. And it can't be increased easily because the increase has to pass through different branches of government before it can be enacted. Plus, it can't appeal to the citizens, who would want to pay more taxes. The second way to finance a budget is to borrow from the public through selling government bonds. Government bonds are basically the responsibility of government to pay whoever the bearer is. The negative side of, well, borrowing money for the public is crowding out, because the money that should be invested is instead borrowed by the government. This is not good for the economy as the government is not a profit-oriented institution. So, it leaves the government to print money, or as it is called, senioraj. Senioraj came from the word senior, or feudal lord, who during the Middle Ages had the exclusive right to mint money in his estate. Senioraj basically means to print money. However, printing money increases money supply. Since there will be too much money in the economy, the value of money will decrease and prices will increase, leading to inflation. Imagine, if the economy only had a hundred pesos, every peso should matter, and every peso should buy something of substance. However, if there is a million pesos in the economy, every peso is relatively insignificant. That is why Senoraj is also called inflation tax, because the people can buy less on the money that they have. However, it is convenient for the government because they don't have to pass bills and the like, they just have to print money which is very convenient for them. An example of a government who overdid Senoraj was the US government during the American Revolution. The Continental Congress during this revolution had to find a way to finance all of its war efforts. The thing is, they can't tax their citizens too much because the economy was not well developed yet during that time. Therefore, they relied on Senoraj. This led to hyperinflation, which made the continental dollars nearly worthless. So this shows how senioraj can be a disadvantage to government if it is overdone. Senioraj can greatly help the government survive, only in manageable size. If the government heavily relies on this, it can create hyperinflation or rapid increase in prices that can be detrimental to the economy of the country. Thanks for listening and I hope you learned something.